Hey guys, Happy New Year! I hope everyone is having an amazing start to the year and I wish you all the very best for the year ahead. Today I wanted to share with you my 2024 luxury wish list. Yes, I do have a wish list once again. If you guys remember last year, so the year 2023, I abandoned the idea of a luxury wish list altogether because I wanted to experiment having no wish list and seeing if my shopping habits changed. Well, I noticed that it didn't really change that much. Wish list or no wish list, I ended up purchasing the items that I thought made sense for my lifestyle at the time. And either way, I realized I don't really impulse purchase anymore. Also, I am currently really hunting for a few items. So I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna have a wish list this year and it's always fun sharing my list with you guys anyway. So here we are. Let's get started with the first item. So number one on my list is a medium-sized practical easy going bag. I used to only love the extremes of sizes, so either mini bags that are versatile enough to transition from day to evening, they can carry my absolute minimum basic essentials, or I would go for a larger tote bag such as my Foray Le Pudge daily battle totes for traveling or for work. So the majority of my bag collection consists of either really small bags or the larger bags. Well, lately I noticed there's a little bit of a gap in my collection of medium-sized bags and that is because I never really wanted a medium-sized bag because I used to find them not useful for any purpose in my life. So they're a little too bulky to carry on a daily basis since I only have a few essential items. So I'd much prefer to just use a mini bag and carry something really lightweight. Or if I needed to carry more stuff with me, I always needed to carry things like my laptop. So I always needed a larger tote. But since becoming a new mom, I am finding myself really wanting to add a medium sized bag. I don't know if I'm getting a little lazy, but I just cannot be bothered to downsize all the time to carry a really cute mini bag. And I just want the option of carrying a few more things and fit things in really easily as well. With mini bags, even though they fit my essentials, even those items need to be so strategically placed. So each time I pack the bag and take items out, I always have to reorganize things in there. So I am on a hunt for a medium sized bag, but I have three criteria. First of all, it does need to have a crossbody option so that I can have my two hands free to carry my baby or whatnot. Because let's be honest, most times I have my baby with me. Second thing, I want a secure closure. So I don't want an open bag. So it either needs to have a zip top or a flap closure, but the flap closure has to be really easy to open and close. So I don't want to buckle. I don't want to have to deal with fussy closure. And lastly, it has to go with most of my wardrobe. So I guess I'm looking for a neutral bag. Oh, and and there's one more thing, I want the bag to be durable. So my quest for this perfect easygoing medium sized crossbody bag has already started. Recently I just went into Louis Vuitton just on a whim because we had a little bit of extra time to kill. I didn't have anything on my mind, I was just browsing and the Speedy in the size 20 really caught my eye. I know it's been around for a little while now so it's nothing new but it never really interested me until now. I don't know, it just seemed like such an easygoing bag. LV zips are always so nice. I did vlog my time at Louis Vuitton, so that vlog should be coming up really soon whenever I finish editing it. I am currently a little obsessed with the Louis Vuitton Speed in the size 20 in the monogram. I looked at the Demi Abin as well, but I think I like the coloring of the monogram more. But there is this hesitation that, well, I think two reasons. First reason, I haven't really been into monograms, so I don't know if it's just a spur of the moment excitement. And soon after I buy it, I'll be worried that I'm gonna get over the whole monogram thing again because I haven't really been into it. Second thing, I just cannot with the price of the speedies. I'd have to be absolutely 1000% sure about the purchase if I wanted to buy it because that speedy 20 retails for over 3,300 Australian dollars. I know in the designer bag world, that price is just normal, I guess. It could even be considered affordable, but I guess I've been buying luxury for a really long time and I remember paying for my Speedy 30 back in the day, 825 Australian dollars. And I once also had the Speedy 25 Bandelier, which I ended up selling. And I remember paying something like $1,500 for a Speedy 25. 
So to have to pay over $3,000 for a small speedy, I'm not sure. So even though I am really, really thinking about it, I'm giving myself plenty of time to think about it so that if I am gonna spend that kind of money on a monogram speedy, at least it won't be an impulse purchase and at least it will be something that I've really thought about. It seems to be a pretty permanent style for at least now. So it's not going anywhere. Even if I decide to get it in a month's time, two months time, I know it's gonna be there. So I'm not gonna rush into it. I'm gonna really give myself some time to think about it. And then I noticed this other Speedy, which is a seasonal Speedy. I think it's part of the new Cruise 2024 collection. I'll insert a photo of this. I noticed this one on the website and I got completely obsessed with it in the last day or so. I only saw it yesterday. So this is another version that I am considering. I just love the ivory light coloring with the Vachetta. The only thing that I'm really not sure about this one is the black handles. I mean, do you think the black handles really go with the general color scheme of the bag? I think it does look pretty modern, but at the same time, if the handle was in a lighter color, I would have really been into it. Yeah, this version is another version that I am seriously considering because I love the fact that it is a little different to your typical monogram. So let me know what you guys think about my new obsession with the Louis Vuitton Speedy all over again. The other bag that I would reconsider is a Chanel 19 bag. Again, I once had the black version and I fell out of love with it and sold it on. But my lifestyle was grossly different that couple of years ago when I sold it. But now I guess that is another bag that could really work for my purpose. I remember it being a really easy plush bag to use. It was really comfortable to wear, it fit a lot, but I definitely don't want it in a black. I would go for a lighter neutral probably if I were to consider a Chanel 19 bag again. But I believe the retail price for that is over $10,000 at the moment. So I don't know how likely it will be for me to purchase one. Maybe if I do see a decent deal on the resale market, I might consider it, but it is another bag that I am sort of interested to try out again. I realized when I was doing my research for the perfect easy medium bag, there weren't really that many options. So if you guys can think of any bag style that might suit my current needs, do share them in the comments below. I always love hearing from you guys because you always give me great ideas. So please, please help me out and leave any ideas you have in the comments below. The second thing on my wish list is, and it has been on and off my radar for a few years now too, I want a larger summer wicker bag. This type of bag has always interested me, so I do remember checking out the Celine version with Triumph logo at the front. I also checked out many Loewe versions because when it comes to that open summer wicker bags, I think Loewe does them really well for pretty good price point considering they are a designer. I guess the reason I never really purchased one of these bags is because I couldn't really see a huge use for them in my lifestyle and they are pretty big so one of these bags will take up a pretty big space in my bag closet so I always thought I don't really need one but I do want to have more outdoorsy picnics with my baby with my friends so I thought it would be a really nice beachy bag also a really nice picnic bag where I can just chuck things in I can even chuck my baby's toys in it so I don't know if I'm just using my new lifestyle as an excuse but a summer wicker bag is definitely high on my priority list once again the next thing, I have spoken about this a few times in previous videos, but I am still really interested in the Trinity ring from Cartier. I tried these rings on recently in all different sizes. So they come in the slim version, the regular version, and that sort of chunky, thicker version. When I showed you guys those rings that I was trying on, a couple of you commented that the slim one looks best on my fingers. And I think I agree with you. I used to think the regular one looks the best on my fingers because my fingers, I guess, are on the long, slim side but I don't have the most dainty hands. So I always thought the slim version might get a little lost on my fingers. But when I was looking back footages of me trying the different sizes on, I sort of noticed that the slim version does look the most flattering on my fingers. They do actually make my fingers look a little more feminine. So I'm leaning more towards the slim version, but I'm not getting this just yet because I want to get back to my pre-pregnancy weight. I think it's gonna be soon because I'm only three kilos away now and 
I just want to be back to myself, completely recovered from giving birth to get the correct size for my fingers. A lot of you shared your experiences with finger sizes and pregnancy, and you mentioned that your finger sizes went up and never completely came back. But I also know a lot of friends and family in real life that their fingers and feet have completely come back, including my mom. And I am definitely noticing that my fingers are really shrinking in size again because towards the end of the pregnancy and for the first couple of months after giving birth, I couldn't even fit my engagement ring or my wedding ring, but they are starting to fit pretty normally again. So yeah, I'm gonna wait until I lose those last few kilos before I look into getting the Trinity ring. I initially wanted to get the Trinity ring last year because I thought it was a nice little touch to commemorate the arrival of my baby. So going from just me and my hubby to having a third member of the family, I thought something from the Trinity range would be really nice. And I guess it's something that I can even pass down to baby C. So the Trinity ring is still pretty high up on my priority list, but I'm just gonna wait until I achieve my pre-pregnancy weight. Next, I do want to add a belt from Celine from their Triumph range. The Celine Triumph range has always interested me, but for some reason, I haven't really pulled the trigger on any of those items. And then I saw one of my friend's Triumph wallet with the shiny gold buckle in the Triumph logo. And I just really love that gold logo hardware. It just looks really nicely polished. I don't know, there is just something really sleek and a little understated about those Triumph belts. I know you know the logo, I know the logo. Anyone who's interested in the luxury items would be able to recognize it. But if you're just an average person who doesn't really care about luxury, it's not as loud as an Hermes belt, for example, with the big H or the LV belt with the big LV logo at the front. And the leathers that those belts come in seem so delicious. So I am definitely really keen to check them out. I might again have to wait until I lose those last few kilos to get my correct size fitted. But I guess belts can be a little more forgiving because they do have multiple holes. I believe the Triumph belt comes with five different holes, so you can wear them on different settings. So I might try it on sometime soon, even if I haven't completely lost all the weight yet. And I guess it'll be a nice way to test if I'll get sick of the logo or not, because I'm still really interested in Celine Triumph bags. It's not really on my wish list because I'm not really hunting for it at the moment, but it's always something that I'm happy to check out whenever I'm out and about. I kind of want to test run it with a belt to see if I will get a little tired of the logo or not not. If I still love the logo months down the track, maybe it's a good indication that I should consider a Triumph bag. So yeah, a Celine belt is something that I'm really interested in at the moment. The next thing on my wish list is actually a category of items. And I do want to add some mid-heeled shoes that are comfortable, but still look pretty dressy. So shoes. It's another category of items where I just had extremes in my collection. I always prefer to either go for flats or high heels because I thought mid heels, they're not dressy enough for dressy occasions, but they're not casual enough for casual occasions. So I thought mid heels are a little useless in my collection, even though I do have a couple of mid heels in my collection. The majority of my collection is either 10 centimeter heels or complete flats. But again, blaming it on my new lifestyle as a new mummy, I'm finding myself for those more dressy occasions, I'm really struggling to walk in those 10 centimeter heels. Not only I'm still carrying around a little bit of extra weight, but also a lot of the times I have my baby with me. So I feel super unstable if I'm holding my baby wearing 10 centimeter heels. So I do want to add some mid heels, even block heels that look a little more fancy that will still give me that little boost in height and match seamlessly with a dressier outfit, but also something that will give me some more stability and comfort. So I've been eyeing a couple of pairs. Firstly, I am really interested in the Jimmy Choo Bing heels. I do have the 10 centimeter heel height version. They do also come in smaller heel heights. So I think they come in either six or seven centimeter heel height. I'm really interested in those ones. I just really love the Bing heels. I think it's such a classic style from Jimmy Choo. I find these crystals just enough amount of dressy for me. It's not overbearing. It's just so elegant, but adds a little bit of something. So I really love these. This nude color works really well for me. So I'm even considering adding this exact same color, but in a lower heel height. But that makes me think that I'm duplicating too much. So I am open to other colors, but I don't know. This is my favorite color and it goes with so many of my outfits. So I might just have to duplicate even if it seems not such a good idea. The other style that I'm considering are the Roger Vivian 
Vivier Classic Bell Trumpet Pumps. It's that perfect seven centimeter heel. I do already own two pairs exactly in this style. This is the off-white color. I also have one in the taupey mushroomy color, exactly this style, but in patent leather. I find myself wearing these two pairs so, so much. So I know that if I add more colors in this style, I'm gonna get the wear out of them. But I'm even considering the ones that are slightly lower. I believe that this style comes in a four and a half centimeter heel height in the block heel. They seem to be even more comfortable. So I might even downgrade to even a lower heel height. Since these aren't the most dressy looking shoes, I mean, not as dressy as the Jimmy Choo Bings, I thought I could go even a little lower. So these will be more for smart casual look or when you just want to elevate your casual looks a little with some more polished looking shoes. I thought these will be great. So I'm definitely eyeing out for more of these pairs. So these are items currently pretty high on my luxury wish list. It really feels fun to have a wish list again. It doesn't always mean I'm gonna buy all of the things on my wish list, but it's really nice to talk it out with you guys. Again, let me know if you have any suggestions on a good, comfortable, medium-sized designer bag that you think I might like. I'd also love to know what's on your wish list this year, so do share them in the comments below as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. As always, thank you so much for watching and spending some of your precious time with me today and I can't wait to see you again soon in my next video. Bye guys!